Well, thank you very much. My name is Tim Moore. This is my wife, Tanya. And this is our beautiful angel, Tatum, who is seven years old and has Rett syndrome. Um, we also have an older daughter, Tanner, who's nine, and Tegan, who's two, is our younger son. Um, before we tell a little part of Tatum's story, I wanted to first thank you all for coming and listening to Tatum's journey. We also are so grateful for Children's Hospital Colorado because of the wonderful care that they have provided ever since Tatum was two months old. When Tatum was born, she was a beautiful, healthy girl. I still remember introducing Tatum to her older sister, Tanner, and feeling the excitement of having Tanner and Tatum be close enough in age, 23 months, that they would be lifelong friends where would they, they would share so many wonderful memories. When Tatum was two months old, she was informed, we were informed Tatum had torticollis. This was when our family was introduced to the wonderful people of children's. I remember coming to Maine once a week to meet the wonderful therapists. All throughout this journey, Tatum was lagging behind many of her sister's milestones, but was still thriving and happy. It's funny when you remember momentous occasions, like the day Tatum stood up and took her first steps on August 17, 2007, at 22 months. Even though we were starting to get concerned about some of her growth, we were still excited that she was growing and learning. Throughout the next 10 months, we started seeing many concerning things with Tatum. She stopped learning, and her happy demeanor changed drastically. She started biting herself and us, raging in anger, crying for hours on end, and as you can tell, she's very happy now, and began losing some skills that she had previously had. This was a long story, or a long process, trying to evaluate what might be going on. And in April of 2008, we were sent to JFK for an evaluation for autism. Tatum was diagnosed with autism, but the doctors felt there was something missing. This led to more tests. July 8th, 2008. July 8th, 2008. This was the day we both remember the rest of our lives. The phone call was from Tatum's pediatrician confirming that Tatum had Rett syndrome. The doctor, like us, had never heard of Rett syndrome until five minutes before she called. She referred us to Children's Colorado. One of the first things that Tim and I did when we received the diagnosis of Rett syndrome was to meet with a doctor at Children's to tell us about the diagnosis and prognosis. I feel very fortunate and lucky to have the experience we did. As you may know, some scientists and doctors are very pragmatic, matter of fact, and maybe not have the best bedside manners. But nobody from Children's is like that, right? <laughs> this doctor was different. I remember some of the first words the doctor at Children's told us. Treat Tatum the same as your other child. Expect her to be a kid, but don't give up on her because of her diagnosis. She then continued on and told us that there are no treatments or cures, but she truly believed that there will be a cure for Rett syndrome and one relatively soon. I tell this story because I'm also a part of a local group, the Rocky Mountain Rett Association, RMRA for short. As our group meets, we share stories of our daughters, their care, and their doctors. The first time we mentioned our experience with the doctor our, to our group, the reaction was, really? Because a few years before that, the same doctor had told other parents to keep your child as comfortable as possible and bide your time because there's nothing we can do and no treatment. I wanted to share this story because in just a few years, science has changed the opinion of an expert who did not think there was hope. And all of a sudden, the demeanor of one doctor has changed and, in fact, is still creating more opportunities for hope among other communities in the neurological world. Even though we have made many strides in science, we still have a lot of work to do. The same time we were meeting with children's staff, we were talking to our pediatrician. She, like us, only knew what she had read on the Internet and had many misconceptions about the syndrome. In fact, we have found that to get the best care for Rhett, Many families, including the families in Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, Montana, Utah, and Nebraska, had to fly either to the west or east coast, Texas, or Alabama to get top-notch care from RET experts. These trips took three to four days, and then they would wait endless hours to get their child checked out. If at any time they needed to see the same doctors, they would have to fly their families across the country and spend numerous hours jumping through hoops trying to get ideas on how to help their situations. We know many Rett families who do have done this for countless years. 
Let me tell you, traveling with a child with a disability is not easy. In fact, when we travel, we have numerous lists we have to check off to, before we go. Does Tatum have her bag with her medicines, a doctor's note to make sure we can carry her meds on this, onto secured airplanes, her special formulas, her G2 bags, and other items we need to make sure she is well taken care of? A couple of years ago, we had a family trip to Chicago planned to visit Tim's brother. In the middle of Hayes, Kansas, Tatum had 10 tonic-clonic seizures in a nine-minute time period. I still have it etched in my mind, me holding Tatum down in the back of the car, trying to insert her emergency medicines rectally as Tim tried to stay calm and not get us in an accident. Her seizures had just started a month before, and this was new to us. We were far from anyone who knew about Rhett. The ER doctors from this small hospital called Children's Hospital of Colorado and got directions and the best care by Dr. Banky. This was when I knew that fighting for a cure is not good enough. We need to make sure that our girls have the best care possible. Luckily, these past, past couple years have been amazing for Rett syndrome worldwide. We have raised awareness, funding, and care to levels our community has never seen before. For the first time, children with Rett syndrome and MECP2 deletions and mutations in the Rocky Mountain region can go to experts who know about Rett syndrome in one location. Thanks to Dr. Banky and Children's Hospital Colorado, we have some enthusiastic and knowledgeable experts in the field of Rett syndrome who are finding ways to treat our children. This is a huge celebration. We were lucky enough last June to have Tatum attend the clinic. Wow, this was an amazing experience. It was a well-oiled machine where doctors, therapists, a nutritionist, a social worker, and nurses came in and took data, but more importantly, gave suggestions on how to help improve Tatum's quality of life. We are lucky because we live in Denver and actually see many of the doctors from the clinic on a regular basis for therapies, checkups, and emergencies. What we witnessed at the clinic were families who get no care at all for their children because of where they live. Their stories were eye-opening. What was even more evident was their excitement and gratitude for receiving top-notch care for their child. To me, this was the true purpose of the clinic. Our families are now starting to see how much their children can do if they are guided by positive, well-educated experts in the field of Rett syndrome. When we received the diagnosis of Rett, a stopwatch started ticking in my head. It comes and goes and can be louder some days than others, but it's always there. Tick, tick, tick. I don't want to say that I speak for all parents with special needs children, but I know that I feel that like the clock is always ticking down and that we can always be doing something to help better our children's future. Parents with special needs children tend to ask a lot, just like children's. If you are not comfortable raising your hand in class in school, you're going to have a tough road ahead of you. We ask a lot of questions. Who's the best doctor for that? Does insurance cover that? Do you know a good dentist that works with special needs? Where can I find diapers for a 13-year-old? We ask a lot for our more special needs children. We ask them to endure endless hours of physical, occupational, speech therapies. We ask them to eat just one more bite. We ask them what they want or need, possibly 50 to 60 times a day. And we ask them to just please keep breathing. We ask a lot from our other children. We ask them to be patient while we work with our special kids. We ask them to understand things they will not comprehend for a very long time. And we ask them to love their siblings unconditionally. We ask a lot from our doctors and therapists. What else can we try? How do you think she's doing? We ask a lot of our friends and families. We ask them to try and understand situations that they've never been in and not be sure how to react or help with them. We ask them to understand. We ask them just to listen. A very hard thing to do. We also will ask a lot of ourselves. We ask ourselves to keep asking and to never stop until our children can kick a soccer ball, have a tea party with their friend, and say, I love you, Mommy and Daddy. And finally, we ask a lot of you. We ask a lot of your time, your efforts, and your understanding. And as much as we ask, we appreciate more. People such as yourselves that say, no problem, sign me up, or just tell me what I can do to help, are what makes us get up in the morning and start asking all over again. 
Thanks again to all of you for your time and support for the efforts to find treatments and hopefully someday a cure for Rett syndrome. We truly appreciate it. Even though we have made great strides, we are here today to not only thank children's, but also to charge every person to not only celebrate the beginning of an amazing clinic that truly is reaching families in need, but also help us continue to lead the Rocky Mountain region in great care. Thank you for having such a world-class hospital that gives parents hope. Thank you. <laughs>